Today we're going to be looking at the kind of strange world of albino and leucistic mushroom spores. It's a really interesting topic that gets into genetics and pigmentation, and you know, we'll be doing a little bit of myth busting too. And just to pique your interest, did you know that true albino psilocybe cubensis mushrooms have actually never been found in the wild? I did not know that. Yeah, so we're going to explain why that is a little bit later. But first, <laughs> I wanted to talk about this really interesting mushroom strain called Jack Frost cubensis. Yeah, it's a really cool looking mushroom and it has a really unique origin story, right? Yeah, so it was developed by a cultivator named Dave Wombat and he right. used a combination of true albino teacher and albino penis envy genetics to create this variety. Wow, so he combined those two and just to clarify, he used something called the smash agar technique. Can you explain what that is? Uh, yeah, so it's basically combining spores from different strains on agar plates and seeing what happens, hoping for a ghetto cross. A ghetto cross. Yeah, basically just hoping for the best. So it sounds like there's a lot of like chance involved in this method? Absolutely. It's unpredictable. Yeah. But skilled breeders like Dave Wombat use their knowledge and experience to kind of guide the process. Okay, and I know we're going to talk more about breeding techniques in a bit, but before we get too deep into that, can we just clarify the fundamental difference between albino and leucistic traits? Yeah, so albinism is a complete lack of melanin, the pigment that's responsible for color. And leucism is a partial loss of pigmentation, so they still have some melanin, but not as much as a regular mushroom. Going back to the breeding process, I'm curious about how you actually go about stabilizing new crosses. Right. So how do growers ensure that the desired traits are passed down you know, reliably over generations. It takes a lot of work, basically. They handpick the mushrooms that exhibit the albino or leucistic traits that they're looking for and use those to produce the next generation. And then they repeat that process over multiple generations until they get a strain that reliably produces those characteristics. Okay. And now I want to touch back on that interesting fact. You know, we mentioned earlier about albino psilocybe cubensis mushrooms not being found in nature. So why is that? That's a good question. So leucistic psilocybe cubensis do exist in the wild, but true albino ones haven't been found. And it might be because the genetic mutations that cause albinism are just super rare in nature. Or it's possible that albino mushrooms just have a harder time surviving in the wild because they lack melanin, which protects them from the sun. So let's talk about how we can actually identify these mushrooms. Like, how can you tell the difference between an albino and leucistic mushroom just by looking at them? Well, the main difference is in the spores. Albino spores are completely translucent, so you can't actually see them with the naked eye. Leucistic spores might look white at first, but they'll eventually turn black and you'll be able to see them. So if you can't even see the spores of a true albino mushroom, how do you figure out what color they are? I mean, obviously you could use a microscope. Right. Yeah, you can make a spore print. So you just take a mushroom cap and put it on a piece of foil, cover it with a glass or a jar, and wait a few hours. Okay, and then what happens? The spores will drop from the cap onto the foil and you'll be able to see what color they are. It's a simple but effective way to tell if a mushroom has black spores or clear spores. Okay, so if the print is dark, then it's either leucistic or a regular mushroom. Exactly. And if it's clear, then it's a true albino. Okay, so that's really helpful to know, especially since there's so much mislabeling out there. I mean, you mentioned albino A+, and albino treasure coast earlier, and those are often mislabeled as albino, even though they produce black spores, which means they're actually leucistic. Exactly. People see a white mushroom and just assume it's albino, but that's not always the case. So it's really important to understand the scientific differences and yeah. not just go by how the mushroom looks. I'm kind of curious about the actual like genetics behind these pigmentation variations. You know, like what causes some mushrooms to be albino or leucistic? Well, it all boils down to genes. Just like in humans, mushrooms have genes that control melanin production, which is what gives them their color. A mutation that completely stops melanin production would cause albinism. And one that just partially affects the pathway would cause leucism. That's so interesting. Like these tiny little genetic changes can have such big effects on how an organism looks. So from a practical standpoint, do these pigmentation variations have any implications for like cultivating mushrooms? Well, albino mushrooms can be a bit trickier to grow because they don't have melanin. Melanin acts like a natural sunscreen for organisms. So without it, albino mushrooms are more susceptible to damage from UV light. So you have to be more careful with lighting when you're growing them. Exactly. You need to create a controlled environment with limited UV exposure. You mentioned earlier that albino A plus and albino treasure coast are often mislabeled as albino. Yeah, it happens a lot. So how can we prevent this from happening? I think education is key. The more people understand the difference between albinism and leucism, the better. 
So we need to like empower people to identify these variations correctly. Exactly. And encourage responsible labeling practices. That makes sense. Okay. Well, this has been a really fascinating deep dive into the world of albino and leucistic mushroom spores. Well, we're going to wrap up our deep dive in just a bit. But before we do, we want to leave you with something to think about. So considering how rare true albinism is in psilocybe cubensis, it makes you wonder what other crazy genetic variations might be out there just waiting to be discovered. Right, like what other hidden traits or mutations could lead to even more unusual characteristics in mushrooms? Exactly. Maybe there are mushrooms out there with colors and shapes we haven't even imagined yet. And who knows, maybe some of those undiscovered varieties could have incredible medicinal properties. Wow, that's a really exciting thought. It just goes to show that even in a field like mycology, there's still so much we don't know. And so much potential for new discoveries. Absolutely. Well, on that note, I think it's time to wrap up our deep dive. We hope you enjoyed learning about the fascinating world of albino and leucistic mushroom spores. And maybe this will inspire some of you to make the next big discovery in the world of mushrooms.